Hey everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. My name is Todd Rothman, and in this video, we're going to go over the stereochemistry of alkenes. Now, here's the story. We've gone through nine major reactions, okay? And you probably feel a little bit overwhelmed, but it's okay, because, you know, you, you knew that going in, that it was going to be a lot of di different details being thrown at you, but hopefully you, you kind of kept yourself on the big picture the anti and sin and both idea and then kind of added the stereochem along the way so this video is not going to be very long nor is it going to have any problems to follow the idea of this video is number one just to give you the big picture again and then number two to identify the the key characteristics of stereochemistry enantiomer, diastereomer, meso, uh, bending of light whether you have optical activity or not things like that okay and applying it to the molecules that we're making so let's get started. Let's talk about, number one, the big picture. So this is the big picture, okay? Uh, we've covered reactions one through nine, and there's still a lot more to go. As you can see, there's uh, little things like down below at the bottom, but we've, we've covered the majority of the information or the, the key in, uh, details that we have to know about, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus in a little bit by zooming in, it's too small to look at it that way. So here are the nine reactions that we're just going to discuss. And I want you to look at the big picture. Now, if you have an alkene and is a primary and a secondary side, what happens if you add a Br or a Cl or an I or an F? So right here are the different halogens. Well, what I wrote was you're going to wind up breaking the double bond, making a carbocation, and then the Br comes in, right? So this is both anti and syn addition. All right, that's the first one. Then we talked about acid catalyzed hydration. We said you could break the double bond with H+, where H+, can be any acid that we would think of like um, H2SO4, H3O+, H3PO4, or H2PO3, uh, many different variants. Just think of any acid right that's what we're dealing with you break the double bond you make a carbocation that's the key here and that's why we know it's both anti and syn all of the both anti and syn reactions are going to allow us to to make a carbocation that's how you know it's anti and syn well once you break it you make a carbocation water can come in or alcohol can come in right if it's water you make an alcohol if it's alcohol you make an ether and that's what happens here and all the rules that apply now this one's actually not something I talked about directly. I didn't mention that if you don't have water, then the sulfuric acid, the, sulf the, f the conjugate base, can come in. But this is not very popular. It's not something that you see anywhere other than in the textbook when you first learn about it, because right away this reverses back out. And so if there's moisture or some kind of water around, it'll come in, the water. So you wind up going up above. But I did put it there just for completeness. Now, um, and I wrote here, if there's no water, then this is the product. But if there's water, then it's definitely A. All right. Then we talked about the anti-additions. And the key here for the anti-additions is that you have these halogens coming in, in the first case. And that when the halogen comes in, if I pull in the Br, remember, if Br is more electronegative, uh, sorry, if Cl is more electronegative than Br, BR comes in first. The less electronegative comes in first. So BR comes in, but because BR has electrons, it makes a triangle. And that's the key. All anti-additions make the triangle. And notice that. All of them do the same thing. So if you know it's an anti-addition, then you know for a fact there's a triangle being formed, and then the next group comes opposite side. So this is anti-only, anti-only. And in this case, we're having Br2 or Cl2 or I2 or F2, but it's in water. And in that case, the water comes in, not the second halogen, as the major product. Oxymercuration is where we have mercuric acetate. So HgOAC2, the mercury comes in and makes a triangle, and then water comes in after, or alcohol, right? It could be water or alcohol. And you get the anti-only. Now, here's my point of this right here. When this water comes in, it comes in anti, higher degree, right? It's always the first group goes to the lower degree at the end of the reaction, and the second group goes to the higher degree. But when it comes in, it's anti. But once it opens up, now it's not anti, right? So when this mercury is replaced with NaBH4 to get an H there, 
Well, that H can come in either anti or sin. So that's why I wrote over here it's anti or sin. So the, the step that's anti is when the mercury is making the triangle. But after that, it could be anti or sin. All right, then we went on and talked about the hydroboration. This is our sin addition. And with hydroboration, the BH3 lands on top of the alkene. You make the BH2 on the lower degree side and the H on the higher degree side. And then you replace it with either OH or you replace it with a carboxylic acid. Now, what you're replacing is the BH2, right? So the BH2 is on the lower degree, but then you swap it out for an OH. BH2 is on the lower degree, but then you swap it out with a T. Now, in this case, I showed BD3 so that D goes to the higher degree, right? And then you swap it out with a T. So D's on the high degree, T's on the low degree. And I wrote, these are sin additions, and these are the combinations, right? You could have BH3, you could have BD3, BT3. You could have CH3COOH, OOT, or OOD, right? And that's what we're seeing here. Number seven is hydrogenation. H2s with either of these metals will add sin, same side, and you'll get right there that answer. We could have H2, D2, or T2. Hydroxylation is where we have osmium tetroxide, OSO4, and it attaches at the same time. It's a sin addition. Remember, all sin additions things add at the exact same time. And so there it is, it's added on. And then you could get rid of that OSO2 by putting in NaHSO3 or H2O2 and you'll just cut out the OSO2 and you're left with OHs there. And I said an alternative is KMNO4 cold. So you could use OSO4 or KMNO4 cold. They do the same thing. You get a dye all and it's sin for both of them, both OHs. And then we talked about carbene. So carbene, we have a CH2N2, or we could have CHX3, where X could be BR or CL. If they write, they're not going to write an F and test you on that, so don't worry, or I. So whatever halogen it goes in. And so if it's CH2N2, then you make a cyclopropane, but there's no halogen off of it. And instead of CH2N2, you could use CH2I2 with zinc or magnesium. And it does the same thing. You make a cyclopropane. Remember, this is the carbene reaction. Or if you have CHX3, then the halogens are on the end. They're still there, right? These are still there. And so you make a cyclopropane, but it's got halogens sticking off of it. All right. And those are the reactions. That's what we've discussed so far. Now, again, if you look at this first page, and I'll give you a nice clean copy, you'll see other things. And this is what we're going to discuss for the rest of the video series. So. We've already talked about some of this stuff, like the stereo chem we've discussed. Uh, we're going to do a little bit more of that now. Uh, the alkynes is a separate video. It's kind of the same philosophy. It's very quick to learn about it. And rearrangement is a review, but you've seen this in its own separate video. So most of this chapter, as you can see, is done. We have a few little odds and ends to take care of. Um, and and they're, they're quite different. So I usually separate that from the rest of what we're doing now. Um, into its own video set because it is a lot of different thinking but we're almost at the end here all right now the first thing I want to do is review stereochemistry okay you have to know your basic ideas right so for example what is an enantiomer now I'm not saying by definition we know it's a non mirror it's a mirror image that's not superposable but what I mean is from a molecular point of view if I have R its enantiomer is S if I have RR its enantiomer is SS, right? You have to remember this. If it's RS, its enantiomer is SR. So these are enantiomer pairs. And it's their opposite. Everything's opposite. Now, these are this is enantiomer, and I'll, I'll kind of move this to the side a little bit. Now, what's the key characteristics here? Well, when it comes to optical activity, well, enantiomers have them. But an equal mix of enantiomers is known as racemic, and it has no optical activity. Okay, so if you have an R, yeah.